Hey everyone, this is part 6 of my testimony. So, when I told my parents that I had same-sex attraction when I was 18, I admit they took it hard. They forbid me from hanging out with guys who are not from our church. And I also remember that I had to be accountable to them, giving them my phone every single night. I remember my dad saying that my life would essentially go back to normal when I was able to prove that I've been delivered from same-sex attraction. And so, from when I was 18 years old to when I was 21 years old, I remember just being discouraged about life. I started university in 2012, and I made a bunch of friends, and I remember whenever they asked me to hang out with them, I would always have to say no, or I would lie to my dad and say I'm doing something else while hanging out with them. I even remember one time when my dad caught me hanging out with an old friend from Bible college, and he was angry that I didn't tell him the truth. At that point, I remember my dad telling me that I had to get a girlfriend. It was during this time in my early 20s when a lot of people at my church and a lot of my relatives would constantly ask me about, Jara, when are you going to get a girlfriend? Jara, when are you going to get married? So at that point in my life, I remember being so discouraged that I even told anyone about my same-sex attraction that I started to develop the habit of lying. Instead of trusting in God, which is what I should have done, I started to live a double life. In front of my church and other Christians, I was one way. I told my dad when I was 21, back in July of 2014, that I was delivered from same-sex attraction. While in private, I was still struggling with pornography, I was still struggling with masturbation, and I was still struggling with lust for the same sex. Now, everybody is at fault here. I grew up in the Pentecostal church, and the doctrine of deliverance, you know, casting out of demons from people, was something that we believed in. But unless the Pentecostal and charismatic church changes their approach to homosexual people, people who struggle with same-sex attraction, they will never reach the community. Compassion towards them and not exploiting them when they are being delivered is the route to go. Even though homosexuality is a sin like adultery and murder, the culture has changed in such a way that we have to change our approach. We can no longer treat it as the sin of adultery or the sin of murder. Instead, we should approach the LGBT plus community like we would, you know, a native tribe from the Amazon or from one of the Pacific Islands. A great example in the Bible that also helped me when I returned to the faith are the eunuchs. Isaiah 56 verse 3 to 5 says, Let no eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who chooses to do what pleases me and holds fast to my covenant, to them I will give within the temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever. I believe that the eunuchs in the Bible are the best example of Christians who struggle with same-sex attraction and gender dysphoria today. So to the church, instead of heaping all of this extra weight on people who struggle with same-sex attraction or gender dysphoria, Help them, encourage them by telling them this truth, that if you hold fast to the covenant of God and choose to do what pleases Him, He will give you an everlasting name better than sons and daughters. Instead of telling them, you gotta get married, you gotta find a girlfriend or boyfriend, tell them that the Lord says He will give you a better name that is better than sons and daughters. If you hold fast, to his covenant. Yes, I truly believe that deliverance is for today. And you know, people, everyone, not only people who struggle with same-sex attraction, but everyone needs to be delivered from spiritual spouses, from the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Lilith, and other demons as well. But to highlight and overemphasize the sin of homosexuality is no longer helpful today. 
like the native tribes in the Amazon or the Pacific Islands, we've got to speak their language and convey the gospel in a language that they understand. And that is why I still use the LGBT plus language when conveying my messages. Now, of course, as you all know, there needs to be boundaries to that. We should not be using their pronouns, as you all know. <laughs> Again, I am very embarrassed that I uh, said that message, and I hope you have grace for me. I hope you can forgive me for that. Know that I have just a strong desire to see even one person from the LGBT plus community be saved. That I would go to ridiculous lengths, kind of like Paul and the nation of Israel. Anyways, that's it for now. I'll see you all later.